It's DTS 127 and the dawning event is here. Vicarious Visions and Hyman Studios join the workforce to build more stuff for Destiny. Listening to Destiny the Show. Oh, what's good, everybody, and welcome to Destiny the Show, the Destiny News podcast to keep you, the Guardian, ahead of the curve in the world of Destiny. I'm BBK Dragoon, and joined, as always, by the awesome Diddy. What's up, dude? How are you? Man, I'm doing very well. Um, this last week has been just. Study, study, study. I'm studying for a certification for uh, my job. That test is on Friday, so hopefully I I pass. (laughs) Um, But uh, this week in Destiny, I departed from my comfortable PvE routine and uh, jumped into Iron Banner. Um, I got three of those bounties done in a single gaming session (laughs) on Tuesday. So I was very happy with that. That was on one character, of course. Um, So I I got some other rewards as well. I did not get the scout rifle yet. Uh, it's nice. It's, it's, it, I hear it's nice. very good. <laughs> it's very much like a Mita Multi tool if you have the right perks, and it's legendary. So you can run whatever exotic slot you want. Plan C, of course. I know you want to put that in that secondary <laughs> slot, dude. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm loving Voops, so. You're Voopin'? Yeah, I'm Voopin' too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but sidearms, did he? You know how I've talked about the show for a long time not liking them? I love them. I love sidearm stuff, dude. No Land Beyond <laughs> sidearm games. If you guys have been watching the the DTS on YouTube, you've seen more No Land Beyond sidearm games. So much fun. It's a lot of fun. We played Crota Zen this week with a lot of you mm-hmm. awesome listeners for our return to Crota Zen event. Thank you guys very much. Everybody who showed up, who hung out in the chat or watched the stream or was actually playing along with us. It was awesome. We did, I think, six or seven Crota's End runs during the time of the event. It was the two-year anniversary of the Dark Below, and to celebrate, we did normal runs. We did cheese runs. We did, you know, hard mode runs. We did an entire HUDless run, which was pretty cool. (laughs) Talked about the history of the event. We gave away some prizes, and all in all, it was fun. What what was your highlight from the day, Diddy, or just one moment that you remember? Oh, man. One that I remember was, I can't, I can't remember if it was Hudless or not, but there was one run that we did. Um, we screwed up the sword phase, like, before we killed Crota, and Crota was, like, running back from the right platform to the center platform, and we had to down him while he was on that walkway Yeah, uh, because the sword was going to run out, and he was going to auto-enrage because it was hard mode, and we just had to do it. So uh, Azure, our resident pineapple boy for the stream Uh, he was running the sword he finally got it he's like oh god no he ran up down to crota and killed him so that was uh that was awesome hopefully we'll see a clip of that uh on the youtube sphere pretty soon here yeah if if we can cut that highlight out i'll stick it in dude or it'd be great to stick it in the show right here i remember (laughs) um the point that i loved the most was you can't see crota's health bar on the Mm -hmm. hudless run and so it's really hard for the sword bearer to know like when he's getting up there. And then at the same time, we were just sort of using uh, Twitch chat, like talking through the stream, you and I. <laughs> so it was this whole delayed communication thing, but I had a blast. It was very nostalgic. We definitely want to do some Vault of Glass runs with you guys because yes. what became very clear is there's a lot of listeners who got the game during Taken King or maybe just started with Rise of Iron who never did Vault of Glass. And that one is, in my opinion, like, the perfect destiny raid mm-hmm. yeah so you've got to if you've never it. run a raid in destiny at all i would highly recommend just starting with vault of glass yeah it sets the table perfectly it's still the the first battle like the lengthy fight that you mm-hmm. have there that to me is a game mode in and of itself that's what i wanted prison of elders to be where the it's Templar. just this, mm-hmm. yeah relentless battle against wave after wave of enemies there's some mechanics thrown in I love that raid, dude. (laughs) But today, we got the dawning event. We talked all about it last week, so I hope you guys are out there racing or you're trying out the new strike scoring. If you want to hear more about, like, all the stuff that's within it, check out last week's show. The event is going to be here through January 3rd. 
So get your record book wrapped up, completed, go after those rewards, and enjoy your daily gifts. Today, we're going to talk about Vicarious Visions and High Moon Studios joining the workforce over at Bungie to help on Destiny. We're talking about the patch that went live today, the changes that are going on with skeleton keys, which are pretty fantastic. This last week, skill-based matchmaking was reduced in PvP. And I think we finally have a couple of SRL tips for our listeners, one in particular if you need to level up subclasses quickly. So let's dive into it. News. First on the table, we got the official confirmation that Vicarious Visions and High Moon Studios are now working on Destiny. We had heard about this from a NeoGAF post. It was a rumor post back in September that these two studios were coming on board to help out for the production of Destiny, and that actually is pretty significant for two levels. First of all, Bungie is now, like, huge, or at least the amount of people who are working on Destiny. What are, what are some of the estimated numbers, Diddy? Um, yeah, l- latest we've heard, Bungie s- themselves are around 750 members strong working estimated. on Destiny. Yeah, estimated. Yeah. Um, and with the addition of these two, High Moon and Vicarious Visions, they're both around uh, estimated between 550, whew, oh my gosh, yeah. 50 and 200 uh, employees as well. So that's about, if you add that all up, around 1,000 people working on the Destiny universe and improving Destiny uh, for Destiny 2. Yeah, really, really conservative that's, that's estimate, awesome. like maybe 800-ish, you know, really non-conservative mm-hmm. estimate, close to 1,000. It's a lot of people getting on board. It makes you think that Destiny 2 is probably going to have a lot of content flowing our way, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So I mentioned the second part of this being critical is this NeoGAF forum post back in September was the giant leak where somebody said, hey, a buddy of mine works at Activision. They had this, you know, employee meeting today and they talked about the future of Destiny, which coming to PC, it's going to have radical changes, the engine's getting overhauled, we're getting bigger play spaces, and by the way, Vicarious Visions and High Moon are also coming on board to help work on Destiny. So this, again, adds some more validity to the leak back in September. We're going to do an entire show talking about that leak in a few weeks when things settle down a bit, because it paints a picture, a pretty detailed picture of huge changes coming to Destiny 2, and how the vision for Destiny moving forward is bigger and better if they can pull it off. So Yeah, totally agreed. And, by the way, we get a little tease of uh, some things that uh, High Moon Studios is actually uh, has been working on in the, the dawning armor sets that are coming uh, this week. That's right. And this week at Bungie, we got to see the three new armor sets that were designed by Joseph Cross. And that's uh, a real cool thing that we're seeing High Moon Studios specifically building stuff that's already being implemented into the game. You guys will recognize this from the dawning trailer. It's that really pretty blue armor that has the pulsating yellow ornament stuff. Pretty cool. Yep. Finally... This week at Bungie brought with it some patch news. They're also doing a Bungie bounty this Wednesday, December 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific. It's going to be three members of Rooster Teeth versus three members of Bungie in an all-out SRL battle. Who's your money on, Diddy? I'm betting Rooster Teeth. I'm going to say Rooster Teeth as well. Neither of us have a lot of faith in the guys who actually designed (laughs) SRL here. You'd think they'd have extra practice at the studio, man. But I'm telling you, Rooster Teeth has the edge. They'll do something dirty. They play video games for a living. Bungie just makes them. (laughs) Dude, they are a huge production studio at this point. If you guys have been following (laughs) Rooster Teeth, like, it's it's crazy the amount of commercial work they're doing working with, like, large brands. Pretty interesting. It's awesome, yeah. What's going down patch-wise, dude? Everybody's interested to hear about Skeleton Keys. Yeah, of course. So uh, this week, patch notes will be available. They have more detail, but we got some 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 brief uh, details here. Skeleton keys they've been adjusted. Skeleton key drop rates have been significantly or slightly. Let me sorry, that was a huge difference. Slightly increased in the Siva Crisis playlist, Siva Crisis Heroic playlist, and the weekly Nightfall. Players will also now receive a skeleton key in their first ac- on their first account, uh, Nightfall clear per week. Yay! So basically, so, the first yeah. character I clear Nightfall with, I get a guaranteed key. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nightfall saved? Uh, no. It's it's no. more 
worth it's it better at this point <laughs> it's better i mean hey, if you're going out guaranteed specific, skeleton key man that's that's good that's a step in the right direction it's definitely a step in the right direction the higher drop rates is a, a step in the right direction skeleton keys seem like an awesome idea until we experience the drop rate but it sucks man this is the first week i got my year three thorn and i've literally had that quest completed forever i mean i'm talking like five weeks or something like that however i just never saved a skeleton key to use it on the abomination heist i'd always get a key forget about the quest and use it on something else i was like oh too cool but i got it this week and i'm happy hey so. i'm excited because strike scoring as well gives you reason to do the strike playlist yeah. now so complete that record book and then see if you can get those keys a little bit more regularly Oh, I'm excited about strike scoring too. I hope it uh, holds interest, holds interest, and maybe create some competition between us and our friends. I also got a Devil's Dawn dude out of that nice. treasure chest, which is the first one I've gotten for Rise of Iron. So I was pretty stoked. All right, so some other stuff is changing, right? Yes. So uh, a few new patch notes: uh, characters who are level forty will now automatically convert uncommon engrams, which are the green ones, to weapon and armor materials on pickup. Finally. Brother Vance now offers materials exchange for passage coins and motes of light. Woo! And legendary weapons obtained from the gunsmith's rank 2 quest can now be repurchased from the gunsmith. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to fix an error code for nightfall activities, right? The honeydew error. That's actually, that was my fault in the, in the show notes here. Uh, but another note here is Nightfall Activity Availability is Restricted Access on Tuesday, December 13th. Okay. Um, so it's in preparation for the dawning event. Nightfall Activities will be unavailable to players on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One from 1 a.m. Pacific time through the release of the Destiny Update 2.5.0 on December 13th. Uh, and this restriction is put into place to prevent players from entering a state where changes to te skeleton key rewards introduced in the update 2.5.0 uh, would not be available until the following reset. So you're just, Bungie says, hey, we're introducing this new thing to this new to this activity that exists already in the game. We're not going to let you play it until the new changes go live. So I think yeah. that's actually pretty good on Bungie's part. This one's only for our Monday night listeners of the podcast on iTunes or Podbean. So uh, 1 a.m. until the launch. Notice they didn't say the time of the launch. So maybe server reset dawn and goes live? Maybe? Maybe. Doubtful. I bet it's going to be <laughs> midday. So why don't we talk about the skill-based matchmaking changes that occurred this week? It was on December 8th. Well, I guess I should say last week at this point. So, uh, Or maybe it was December 7th or 6th. No, it was the, it was the 8th. So I'm going to quote here. From the Bungie.net post that Cosmo made, we've made a change to the matchmaking system in an effort to increase match quality. Our specific goal is to reduce the number of matches that begin before they fill up with players. To achieve this, we are expanding the available skill range for other players earlier and more aggressively. We will also be looking for lower latency matches for longer than before. Essentially, this puts a stronger bias on connection quality with less emphasis on skill matching. This may result in slightly longer matchmaking times in some cases. For some of you, this could mean that you'll be matched with opponents well outside of your skill range. We hope the trade-off is worth it to improve the Crucible ecosystem in general. As always, our work in designing a Crucible experience that serves all players is never finished. Be sure to let us know what you experience out there. Our forum, just like our game, is a constant source of great feedback. These changes are now live in all playlists. After you play some games with the new settings, feel free to post in this thread with any feedback you have. Let us know what you think. End Quote. Oh, I'll play this excluding trials, of course. Trials is wins. Uh, they match you based on your card, basically. How many wins you have on the card in connection. So, All right, dodgy subject. So there's two sides of the coin. There's some folks who are happy, some folks who are not as thrilled. My personal opinion is I'm excited about these changes because throughout the 15 games or so I played this week, I did notice a bit of a difference. However, I'm going to reserve judgment until I've hit 50 games on the new settings, and then I feel like it's a comfortable amount to share, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Bungie's, they've got to work with what they've got right now, uh, at least until Destiny 2 comes out with the reworked engine and everything. I believe this, uh, this change will be noticeable, whether it's an improvement or it's the worst thing ever. That's up to whoever has been 
a victim of uh, bad connection games in the past. So uh, it's it's definitely something that you have to play the game for a while to really make a concrete decision about whether it's good or bad. Because, you know, first game after the changes go live, you could have a red bar and then people will say, hey, I thought you fixed this. Obviously, that's oh, just know, one. Yeah. That's, that's one game. You're not even giving it a chance. So uh, it, it, the big picture, we got to look at the big picture here. So uh, get a bigger sample size, see if it's uh, an improvement overall. Um, of course, it's uh, definitely hit or miss when Bungie introduces changes like this because it's uh, it, it's difficult to hit that sweet spot in uh, matchmaking. It's tough to satisfy everybody, and I agree. I even think 50 games is rather low. I'd rather hit 100 games. I think, you know, that <laughs> maybe puts it a little bit closer. I'm going to quote here again. Their specific goal is to reduce the number of matches that begin before they fill up with players. And if you're a solo queuer who played Rifted all this week, I almost guarantee you you had at least one or two matches <laughs> if you solo queued where you jumped in and it started 4v6 or it started 3v6. <laughs> I had a game where I flew in and it was 6v6, of course. This was, this was before the, the matchmaking changes went live, of course. Um, but 6v6, and then when, I guess, my team of three that was on my team saw the opponents were a team of six, they left immediately. So it was 3v6 for the good portion of the match there. So hopefully yeah. this will fix something like that. I actually loved Rift this last week for Iron Banner. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, but it, as soon as I partied up with people, a ton of fun. I'm telling you, 6v6 and especially Iron Banner week, I don't think is a good solo queue thing. I just don't. Yeah. Like, I know not everybody has people to play with, and it can be a hassle to go out there on the Bungie.net recruitment areas of the forums, right, and trying to look for actual clans. But it changes the experience dramatically. I played mm -hmm. some solo queue yes. this week, some team. I will not play <laughs> Iron Banner without teammates period like even if it's just one or two people dramatic difference <laughs> so all righty we had a pretty funny post diddy that i wanted to read over on reddit <laughs> is it okay if we do this i think it's okay awesome this was submitted by trainer a it's titled when the girl you're dating doesn't like destiny and he says so i've been seeing this girl for about a month totally cool down to earth easy to talk with and a lot of shared interest except one she hates how much I play Destiny, even though she was fine with it at first. I wouldn't say I'm addicted or anything, but I like to play when I get home after work and when I have free time and whatnot. So today, I get a text from her asking what I'm doing tonight. I tell her when I get off work, I'm going to go play some Destiny before I have to leave for hockey. She ends up calling me and gets pretty upset, saying that we should spend some time together before I go to hockey, and that I shouldn't be wasting my time on a video game. I remind her that we hung out yesterday and we're hanging out again tomorrow and I was looking forward to some me time. So then she drops an ultimatum on me. It's either her or destiny, then hangs up. Dun, dun, dun. I'm a little rattled by the whole thing and I don't really know what to do tonight. So I figured I would ask the Reddit community for some guidance. What do you guys think I should do? Iron Banner or Trials? <laughs> Upvote! Upvote! Love it. Trainer A, fantastic <laughs> post. All right, Diddy. Two what times can gilded, of course. Oh Two times gosh. gilded. Does that mean he got gold? Yes. All right, so what can people do, Diddy, to level up subclasses super easy this entire week through SRL? Equip them as you do races, and then complete the bounties, and you're good to go. It is a very fast way to get your subclasses. <laughs> Boom. If you're going to be racing anyway... And you have other gear that you want to get done. Do you think the um, the chaperone quest will still be available to do this way? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we should probably mention that. So uh, the first time SRL, I think, I don't know if it'll be available this time around to do. Uh, but when SRL was first around, you could equip the last word. Um, and there's a part of the quest where you have to get a certain amount of kills or a KD or whatever because death resets progress as you complete that version of the quest. Um you don't really die in SRL, so you can complete matches with the last word equipped, and uh, it will progress that portion of <laughs> of the quest so you can complete it a little bit easier. I forgot about that. And that's about it for news this week, you guys. I hope you enjoy the dawning. hope you enjoy strike scoring. We've got some Twitter questions to answer. It came from Twitter! This week we had a really good question from at P. Swayze. It says, love the show. Will there be Nexus strike loot? 
for skeleton keys? And that's a great question. So he's asking, will the remixed Nexus Strike have some Strike exclusive goodies to go after in that chest, the Strike Horde chest afterwards? What do you think, Diddy? I hope so. I definitely, definitely think so. Because, you know, they have skeleton key strike loot for pretty much every other strike in the game. Um, the Nexus, Tanix, and uh, Omnigol. the Will of Crota, Omnigol. Those are the three remixed strikes that he's uh, referring to. I believe those will definitely have uh, strike-specific loots because... We already have Grasp. It, actually, with yeah, Omnigol. we already have Grasp, so the remixed one is going to have something a little bit different maybe. So that'll be actually interesting because they'll have new strike loot added into the game. I'm super excited now. Oof. Doesn't Antanix has the um, casino carpet cloak, right? Yes. I can't remember what it's called, but I loved it. Is it cloak of Tanix, right? It probably is. Yeah. I don't yeah. have one myself, so I don't know. Oh, dude, I got the big fuzzy <laughs> collar. I love that. But here's oh, it's a the hood. Thing. It's, it's not a hood. It's one of the only cloaks in the game that is hoodless, which is interesting because the Dawning Hunter cloak is also hoodless. So I'm super excited about that. Mm-hmm. And now you can buy ornaments. I know which ones I want to buy. I want to buy a thorn ornament. I think I want a, a thorn ornament, and I want a might a multi tool ornament because that's a fun gun to use right now. I really want a hawk moon ornament, even though that gun is not really great right now. You recently had a video on it as well on your. Yeah, YouTube I'm trying channel. to play with a bunch of different guns, and it's been way more fun. I'm telling you what. If you guys are bored of PvP, play with weird guns. Play with different <laughs> weapons than just the standard meta guns. And yeah, there are some games where I just end up like with a .6 KD. But the reward and the feeling of like, dude, the, that time I vooped the guy and we ended up <laughs> like winning the game using No Land Beyond, that overcomes any of the bummer of going like .6 against a full team of like clever matadors. So <laughs> I overall, have a video I'm, coming out on my YouTube channel uh, sometime soon in the next week or so uh that talks about a really silly build but uh it confuses the crap out of your opponents so that's uh it's gonna be fun yeah so you're starting to upload some content pretty soon can you reveal like when that is or do you know after my test on friday for my certification because i have 274 test questions to get through yeah um so <laughs> of which they will pick 60 and i have two hours to take it it's multiple choice so i don't have to write an essay or anything but uh it's uh after that i think um we'll see some youtube content for me how many are you allowed to miss i have to ha get 70 percent to pass so 42 okay. 42 and above is so passing. you you can't miss more than 18 right Ugh. well and good luck for those of you wondering it's on uh network security so Christmas yes. time is coming up. You know what that means? It's going to be a DTS Christmas. We get to do another round of our favorite dorky intros, which I am <laughs> excited for. Overall, guys, enjoy the dawning. We'd love to hear what you think about it. If you have any questions, tweet them at us, at Destiny the Show. Shout out to at Peace Swayze for the good question. We love getting those, and we like talking with you all. Thanks for coming out to return to Crota's End. Made that day an absolute blast. <laughs> we had over... Just a lot of people stopping by the channel throughout the day. New followers, new people who are welcomed to the DTS community. Diddy, where can people find your content? Twitter.com slash Diddy, DTS, D-I-T-T-Y, DTS. And YouTube.com slash Wooshness, W-O-O-O-S-H-N-E-S-S. Remember to hop on our Discord, discord.me slash Destiny the Show. You can talk to us there and say hi to other people in the DTS community. Follow us on Twitch at Destiny, the show on both Twitter and Twitch there. You can go to our website, destinytheshow.com, for all the links from today and more. Check out our friends at destinytracker.com, best place in the Destiny universe to track your stats and a couple of other cool things. You can follow me at BBKDragoon on Twitter and YouTube. Enjoy the week. We'll talk with you next time, Guardians. Guardians.